Another by Conquering Mega Eagle! Hello folks, how are you doing? Um, <clears throat> I wasn't going to make this video uh, because I'm, I'm way behind on... Uh, I was going to send a, a couple of blades to um, to my mate Vinny. Um, Vinny's day off uh, for, for, for some, some R&D feedback and that, you know? Uh, these, are, these are little blades that I want to sell, so... Uh, I think I mentioned in a previous video, they're, they're going to be based on this Puko that I made last year. Um, really like it. It's got a, it's got an incredibly fine blade. Um, but you know, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to put them in the shop yet. We'll see what what um, what Vinny says. But because uh, he's the man, the man that knows everything as far as blades are concerned. <laughs> like, the main thing is finding finding a nice way of putting them in a sheath, I suppose. Um, either way, uh, I, thought I'd, I thought this video is, is really just about these two um, um, bevel grinding jigs. That's the one. So uh, there's a million and one different ways of doing bevel jigs, and there's there's loads on YouTube. Um, I've already done done one previously for making massive knives. Um, but I didn't have anything for making small ones, so I was using that big one for um, for making small blades, which is a little bit a uh, little bit cumbersome. But um, let me show you these. So even even though I'm not um, not definitely going to make these knives and put them in the shop, um, I'd like to. I think they're good. Um, I'm not sure how much demand there is for a just a razor sharp blade that's really not going to stand up to much abuse. Uh, personally, I, you know, it's, it's something that you could carry. I think it's something that you carry with with an axe or a parang, um, you know, to complement it, and then you'd you'd sort of cut out everything in between, I suppose. Um, or just an everyday knife if you're not going to do anything too savage. Uh, this is this is one I started making with. This is the first blade I've made with with these jigs, and they work they work so nicely that. I thought I'd show them to you. So the whole the whole point of these is there's there's a matching pair. Um, so I get I get them in exactly the same same spot every time, and it gets the ricasso perfect on the back. You know this this bit here. Yep. Um, so you know, take that nut out all the way so you can see it a bit better. Very very simple. Um, bit of angle iron and. Uh, Come on, man! Oh, I'm gonna end up using using my teeth to undo that. Whatever. Uh, so we've got we've got um, a shape cut out of the piece of angle line, uh, and you can see a step there. That's what the the back of the blade butts up against, and then this is the this is the clamp. Yeah. Uh, this surface here, I mean, the clamp also doubles as a stop, so it it goes up to the platen that I made on the bench grinder, um, and these are set at a specific angle, so that was the only, you know, it wasn't the tricky bit, but the only bit that was vaguely tricky was getting these angles the same accurately. I suppose uh, these are matching so that you can turn the blade, you, well, what, I'll, what I'll probably do in, in practice if I'm making a, a, a batch of knives is, um, is have one, one in each and then I can I can get one blade hot and ground, throw it in a bucket of water, work on the other one and then, then switch them and then, you know, work on the other side uh, then then obviously take the blades out swap the blades around in the jigs and uh, and well why don't I show you doing that now eh? I still got to mark the center line of the blades up actually that's the the only thing I haven't got figured out how to avoid doing that which isn't which isn't a really a big deal at all it's just a uh, you know I've still got to put a center line there and that makes that makes the rest of the process a lot easier
being in the present. Now, in order to be able to plan, in order to be able to strategize, in order to be able to, in order to be productive, you do need to have moments of breaks where you kind of shut this off. And that's what my wife always says. There really aren't the in betweens. It's kind of a broken clutch in gears two through four. Hopefully you can appreciate how how quick and easy it was putting those bevels on. Um, I always get comments from the uh, from the armchair knife makers uh, if there's any discoloration in my blades. Like I only obviously let them get to a discoloured state if they've not gone through heat treatment yet. Yeah, which is you know no different to, to when you forge a knife. Like you, you do your your hot work before. Uh, before you heat treat, so <laughs> just to, just to clarify for a few people that seem to struggle to to understand this, it doesn't doesn't matter if you turn the turn the steel blue if you've if you've yet to heat treat it. This is a annealed O1 tool steel, so it's battery soft at the minute. I try and get as much of the blade work done as possible, and then um, you know I I actually started polishing blades up before I um, before I heat treat them because if I if I Merely do the quench with the um, uh, with the butane torch with, the, with my roofer's torch that I use, and I just arrange some bricks in a little little circle. Um, the butane um, doesn't doesn't cause half as much pitting as the uh, uh, the coal forge does, you know. So if I if I heat treat on coal, which I, which I do with my parangs and that, like you know, I think it gives quite a nice finish and it really beautifully carburises the surface, which is great for corrosion protection. But you don't really want uh, a black black knife, so 
what I'm basically saying is that that uh, dog hair that doesn't that doesn't matter at all. You know the discoloration. Yeah, if it's if it's getting red hot and you know it's starting to spark, then it means you're burning carbon off. But um, at this at this stage, that's really the only damage you're going to do to it. And obviously, you've got to be way up into the 900 degrees to to start burning carbon off the um, off the steel, which I'm not getting near, am I? Anyway, so that's my uh, there's my my little knife jigs. If you can see two uh, two nice sets of bevels on those knives. Um, don't know how long that took. I never time things. Um, there's the desired simplicity itself, but the whole point of this is that these these jigs are only really made for um, doing this one designer blade, which you know I might not ever make any more of. But it was you know an exercise in investigating the uh, the jigs as much as anything else. And I think if I can make a set of jigs in uh, you know in ten minutes, and then then I know every single knife that comes out of those jigs is going to be identical. It's a massive bonus, isn't it? But anyway, that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this this little one. Sorry, I didn't show you making the jigs, but like you know, it's just a couple of bits of uh, angle with some gobs of weld on it, isn't it? All right, take care, folks. Bye bye.